So what, what do you know about Mojo, then? He's very, very wary. The only person he'll actually let cuddle him, touch him, is me. OK. And with you, John? He just barks, runs off, growls. Right. And, and that's it. But it's, it's everybody. Right. Mostly men. Yeah. Yeah, OK. How does that make you feel? Terrible, to be honest with you. Um, it's upsetting. I can't get very close to him. I just want him to be a normal dog and come and say hello, Dad, wag his tail and let me give him a stroke. Yeah, and, yeah. And it's as simple as that. Oh, what a good boy. <gasps> good boy. Calmness reigns. Yeah, he's, he's yeah, very yeah. calm. But as soon as John enters the room, Mojo becomes agitated. <laughs> I'm not overly keen on getting too much closer. No, to him, I so. wouldn't either. I mean, we don't need to stress him out too no. much. Good boy. Ah, uh, really? Good boy? <sighs> While Mojo is clearly uncomfortable with John in the room, his hostility rises even further when Karen leaves. <laughs> Already there's a bigger problem. So what if you get to approach him now, then? <laughs> I didn't know what to do. Gone. So the reason he was running around was he was trying to escape, but I was in the door. Yeah. As soon as I moved out of the way, he's off like a little rocket. So every time I come home and Karen's not here, that's what I get. I need John to be able to get up close and personal with a calm mojo. And the key to mojo feeling calm and safe is to use my secret weapon, Karen. So Graham doesn't stress Mojo out any further by being near him. He's standing back to give John the best chance of building a bond. And he's come up with a way to train from a distance with walkie-talkies. Karen, it's your call because you can see Mojo better than I can. If you think he looks really petrified... Then I need you to pick up the walkie-talkie and let us know, stop, and we'll get John not to go any further. Yeah, just stop there, John. Now Graham wants to get John gradually close enough to sit down beside Mojo. But as John gets closer, Mojo's anxiety builds. I, no. No. But Karen is able to calm him no. with a clear no command. OK, I can see Mojo's calmed down a bit now, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. So a bit, bit of praise and then we'll go again. Good boy. Good boy. OK, John, when you're ready. No. Wait there. Now, John's going to move. We'll just leave him there. You can do your thing, Karen. That's right. Good boy. Good boy. Mojo's looking now, but he's not, not reacting, is he? No. No, not. Good Craig. boy. So, you see, the message here is you can look at John and you don't have to react. And if you do that, Mum will stroke you and love you. Good boy. And with only a few feet to go... Can John take a seat next to him? Oh, boy. You can see where this is leading, can you? Good boy. How are you, Karen? Yeah, very calm. A very, very tiny little growl, but nothing really at all. Good. No. No. That's it. We're getting there. How does he feel with you? He feels fine. He doesn't look particularly stressed to me. But the real test is will Mojo allow John to touch him for the first time ever? Right, John, what you're going to do is you're going to take your left hand and just sort of drop it down towards him slowly. That's it. Now, with an open hand, just sort of offer it underneath his chin. Give him a little tickle on the chest. Boy. Good boy. Great. And how's he reacting, Karen? Brilliant. And he's slightly wary, but he's putting up with it. He's, you know, he's like, oh, okay, this is not so bad. Good boy. Hey. Oh look, he's moved his head towards you. He wanted more. Now Mojo has accepted John as not being a threat. He wants affection from him. Good boy. <laughs> he's a good boy. That makes me really happy. Come on, Fox. Any hard, shiny surface, laminate wood, tiles, he, he simply won't walk across. Come on. Come on. He doesn't want to come out in the living room or all these other places where 
he could happily interact kind of with Freddie and, and with his family. He's so nervous all the time, and that feeling must be awful for him. I feel like he's re regressing a little bit as well. It's, he's retreating and spending less time with us. As Buckley's floor phobia got worse, Glenn came up with an idea, peppering carpet islands across the ground floor. We realised if we put a blanket down, we would walk on it. And I think in our heads, we just thought it was a temporary thing. It can't keep going that way in the future, especially with a toddler and would like to have more children. The time it's taken to deal with Buckley's issues is becoming a real problem. So what have we got? We've got a really quite extreme case of a dog who's scared of something that, you know, to you or I might appear a bit random, but it's very real to Buckley. And I've got to turn around five years of phobia and get him to be happier walking across all surfaces. Look at that, that's lovely. It's a change of mindset. All you've got to do is just keep yeah. walking with me. We'll have a nice time. How does that translate to inside? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? We're going to walk into the kitchen and go, let's walk through together. Yeah. Come on, then. <laughs> lovely. Come on, then. Oh, that's... Oh, not so sure there, were you? That's it. Come on, then. Good boy. Good With lad, Graham giving fine. Buckley Good no boy. option of backing out, Let's go back. this Labrador is soon following in his footsteps. Good lad. That's very good. He's getting it. But he's still nervous. He's like, <laughs> OK, I'll trust you, but I'm not sure yet. Yeah, I'm not yeah. feeling it. The only way for Buckley to overcome his phobia is to repeat the process dozens of times. Oh, lovely. I'm going to do something quite bold now. I'm going to take all of the carpet islands away. I'm still not sure. <laughs> if you start to say to yourself, it's not going to work, it's not going to work, it, it leaks out to the dog. He'll sense that. He will. Yeah. I don't even know how they do, but they do. If you walk through and go, I'm just seeing this in my mind's eye, it's going to be fine. There you go. Keep going, keep moving, keep moving. That's it, well done. We had a bit of a moment there, look. Good boy, good boy. So the big problem is the hallway bit. Yeah. Buckley's made it to the living room, but he's lost his footing, and Danielle's confidence has taken a knock. Come on back through, Danielle. Keep moving. With Danielle losing her nerve, is Buckley starting to panic? OK. Yeah, come on back through when you're ready. Just go. Graham. Oh, are you struggling? Yeah, from the rug. Hello, mate. You all right? Graham steps in. Come on. And confidently gets Buckley moving That's again. Hey. So we stopped on the scary bit. And then I turn around. Come on. So this is just like in the park. If I go, I go. Yeah. I stop, I stop. Good boy. So if you get a problem, once you've got him moving, try and keep going if you can. It was awful just seeing him panicking a little bit. I know. And he has obviously got better. When he has a little panic attack like that, it's really important that we don't look the same. So even though you're thinking, oh, bless him, the look from me is like, yeah, I know, mate. Come on, you've got a job to do, I'll show you. Mm -hmm. I'll, we'll do it together. Mm -hmm. So if I keep moving, he starts to get the hang of it. That's fine, look at that. Just go. Keep moving. Good boy, come on. Marvellous. How's that feel? Amazing. <laughs> well done. Good boy. <laughs> I can hear you now. Wow. I've seen dogs bark when the phone goes off, but I've never seen anything quite like Frank. It is literally impossible to have a conversation in the room when Frank's there. Graham wants to tackle Frank's shouting around phone calls first, but will he listen? Let's play a ringtone. <laughs> yeah. Quiet. Good boy. Right. Let's try again then. Hello. <coughs> no. Quiet. Oh, good boy. So far, so good. Hello. Hello. <coughs> no. Quiet. Good boy. That's good. Remarkably, with a firm command followed by praise, in just a matter of minutes, Frank follows the leader and pipes down when Graham's on the blower. Hey. Quiet. Good boy. Hello. Yes, yes, it is, yeah. 
and with a very important customer called Frank. Not bothered, Frank. No, he's not, is he? Yeah. Hello. Good boy. Crikey. <laughs> I just think your hello, you sound very nervous, because what I've seen you do is you've gone, hello? <laughs> It's like a wait for an atom bomb to go off, isn't it? It's because of what you're used to, yeah. yeah. But here's the thing. If you're acting as though you think there's something to be scared of, yeah. what's he to think? So will Paul be able to act the part and show Frank he's in charge? OK, let's try it again, Paul. Hello? <laughs> hey! Good boy. Got a dog here that can't stop barking. <laughs> Yeah. Good boy. OK, good boy. Much better. Yeah. Let's do one again, then. Let's prove the point. <laughs> Hello, there. Good boy. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? How are you doing? Nice, right. nice to meet you. That's very good. Good boy. Good boy. It's a lovely moment there. He looked at you as if to say, is this what you want? Yeah. You want me to do nothing? Yeah. You know? Good boy for doing nothing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah.